Welcome to the Resistance Broadcast. This is very serious business. It's Trailer Watch and Title Watch 2019. And we're dabbing all over the place because of it. I feel, uh, I feel uh, like I'm sneezing into my arms. So the people, out there, on. the people out there listening on audio, we were just trying to do dabs. I don't know mm-hmm. if those were our, but look, you're supposed to look like you're sneezing into your arm. I guess that's a cool thing to do. But you know what is a cool thing to do, guys? And that is podcast. And especially if you're podcasting about Star Wars this time of year in 2019. Welcome back, everybody. It is the Resistance Bro- Res- <laughs> It is the Resistance what? Broadcast. I am John Hoey. Thank you so much for joining us today. It is Monday. We're going to get into our news. We're also going to talk about Star Wars Celebration, which is right around the corner. <laughs> we are 18 days away from the Star Wars Episode Nine panel that 20% of us that are going to Celebration will get into, and we will get into that a little bit later. Um, <laughs> Lacey's doing her best to distract me right now, so you know what? <laughs> Let's just bring these guys in right now. James, Lacey... How you guys doing? Can you believe that we are less than three weeks away from seeing footage from episode nine and knowing what it might be called and all that sort of stuff? Are you excited? What's going on, guys? Um, I, I no, I mean, I, I can't even wrap my head around that. Honestly, I just don't even think about it. It's gonna hit. It's gonna become real, like when we're there or when we're traveling to go. That you know what I mean? Yeah. Like seeing yeah. each other, seeing the the convention and all yeah. that stuff. I'm excited about that. Just happen. hanging out the first night and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. the, th- the three of us haven't hung out once together ever. We've hung out separately in different parts, but With never me. together. So that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Very interesting. With Lacey, Lacey has met just about everybody ever yeah. <laughs> on the podcast. Yep, yep. Um, yeah, Lacey, what do you think? Are you uh, are you excited? What's going on? I'm super pumped. I'm excited. John's going to have to travel with me from lovely Connecticut to Chicago. Uh, we're leaving yep. at 6.05 a.m., Yes. And he's going to be with me all day and then all through the weekend and then all day Monday. Yep. Buddy trip. That is true. That is true. It is confirmed. <laughs> we're even getting a, 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 a what are we getting a limo? What are we getting? No, it's a car service. It's not a limo. Oh, car service. Oh, not a, not a limo. <laughs> Guys, for the people out there before they go, oh, car service. Going hey. to JFK in New York is terrible. So JFK. If, you, if you have to park there, it's a nightmare. I was just in, uh, I was just at JFK this past weekend. I went to uh, the Bahamas this past weekend. Do you regret it? What's the, what's the sucks? airport in New Jersey? Newark? Newark. That's it. Yep. I always flew into Newark. Mm. Um, no, I, I am. Uh, I, I thought we were getting car service. Like I was going to get champagne and stuff like that, but that's not the case. Oh, not, nah, dog. Uh, not at 6.05 a.m. Kevin McAllister cheese pizza. I thought I was going to get my own personal this cheese pizza. This is the height pizza. of luxury. I thought we were going to go to toy stores, all that stuff, but I guess oh, not. Oh, um, jeez. Well, I'm really excited, and we're yes. together all weekend long, so let's see how, how long we can stand each other's company. We'll pull it off. I'm It'll just kidding, fine. guys. We're going to have so yeah. much fun because it's Star Wars, so whatever happens... Star Wars. All right, guys. Let's see if we don't kill each other. I'm just kidding. We're going to have so much fun. Guys, speaking of kill each other, um, we got to get into those <laughs> poll results here. <laughs> and before I get into the poll results, the poll has to do with an article I wrote on StarWarsNewsNet.com uh, last week, which was uh, a rumor that I wrote up, and I clearly wrote rumor, rumor. <laughs> what is that word? Rumor, rumor. In case anyone didn't realize that, that uh, I heard that Benioff and Wise could be the next in line to film their first movie and that it may take place well before the Skywalkers, potentially Old Republic style. And I even said, you know, I got one source on this thing. Um, I'm not as confident in this as I am about the Kenobi thing. Hence why my Kenobi report doesn't say rumor anywhere on it. So keep Mm -hmm. that in mind. And, uh, yeah, I just kind of said I heard this from one source, so I'm just putting it out there. Get your pinches of cinnamon. Sprinkle it. Sprinkle Uh it, guys. It's called Uh a rumor. Just (laughs) because 5,000 other sites, including your site, uh, reported it as fact is not my fault, so I apologize that uh, that happened. But listen, guys, I wrote it as a rumor, and that's the story. So we're going to talk about the rumor right now in the poll results, and we asked you guys, would you be happy if the Game of Thrones showrunners, Benioff and Wise, and ended up making their films set in the Old Republic, which is what everyone's been kind of wishing for, for the most part. 
And Sounds we gave about you four, right. Yeah, we gave you guys four options, and uh, it was a, a positive response anyway. Um, four, only 4% said no, that they don't like that era in Star Wars. 7% said they're not interested in Benioff and Wise, so probably not Game of Thrones fans, uh, what have you. Then we go up to 26% that said they're in for anything these guys did. So whether that's uh, before the Skywalkers, after the Skywalkers, somewhere else in the galaxy in a different time, they're just down for Benioff and Wise. So probably huge Game of Thrones fans, you would guess. And then 63% said simply, yes, finally. Let's do a little Old Republic stuff. It's been bounced around, knocked back into Legends, and talked about ad nauseum. So let's do it. So guys, we're looking at... 89% 89% said yes or in for anything these guys do with 63% saying yes, finally, Old Republic. Are you shocked that that many people are positive overall in their reaction to uh, this being an option? Well, John, after you after you broke this confirmation, I was, uh, you know, <laughs> I, what? <laughs> I'm sorry, did I read the story wrong or something? Okay. Well, anyway, you, you may have. You'd um, be the first. Yeah, I, uh, I I looked at this and I would, the the one thing that really surprised me is um, not is not no I don't like that era, um, but but uh, so much the not interested in Benioff and Wise. Like I don't I don't understand that can only be from people who are like disappointed with everything that Game of Thrones was. Like, I don't even watch it, and I'm like, oh, yeah, that was a big, successful show, so people are probably going to like this. I don't even know anything about them, and I'm still interested in what they're doing. But there's right. there's like a there's like 10%, almost 10% of people, um, I guess closer to five, but um, that are like, no. Like, get these people out of here. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it makes me kind of feel like, what's the percentage on Ryan Johnson? Is it... Is it... Yeah. It's a dangerous know, question you know I mean? to ask on the interwebs. That is a dangerous <laughs> yeah. question to ask. Yeah. So anyway, um but yeah, well, what do you what do you percent? Yeah. Uh I would do yes finally. I mean, I think that that just makes sense. Like I don't watch Game of Thrones, but I would like to see Game of Thrones meets Lord of the Rings meets, you know, or no, I'm sorry, a Star Wars meets Lord of the Rings kind of thing. I just think that would be really cool and I'd like to see like not stormtroopers, but like other waves of army, you know, whatever it ends up being or something. I just think it would be really neat. So mm-hmm. I, I, and I want to see it like, um, on the big screen, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. yeah Not sure. just like a low budget TV show. Not that game of Thrones is low budget, but. Oh, absolutely you know not. Probably the, the biggest scale yeah. TV show we've seen to date until the star Wars ones come out ironically. Yeah. So, um, Lacey, what did you vote for? I voted for the 63% correct. Yes. <laughs> finally. Mm-hmm. Because okay. I love the idea of this being in the Old Republic. And I love what James just said. A cross between Lord of the Rings and Star Wars. That would be... Ugh, that would be amazing. And I'd be all yeah. for it. And everybody else, you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's it's interesting to me because... You know, these guys are really only known, as James said, for the one thing. Um, they may have done, you know, I think they have done other works. One guy did, did wrote part of a Wolverine movie and that sort of thing. But, but it's still enough, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's still enough. And, you know, you have the detractors, and a lot of the detra- uh, detractors that I saw in comments said, well, they just took George R. R. Martin stuff, and they don't know how to write. And as far as I understand it, they wrote the last two seasons of this show because he didn't... They went past the books, and they did. I loved the last season of Game of Thrones. I thought season seven was great. Um, I it excited me for what's coming up in season eight, which uh, everyone seems pumped about. They saw the trailer; they're all jacked up about it. These guys wrote that too. It's premiering so, during celebration. During celebration, yeah. <laughs> so I, I I find it funny. It just seems to me, and it's unfortunate that anybody will grasp at anything to find a negative reason to dislike something. And I think that's an unfortunate way to look at things because these guys, as far as I can tell, are pretty bulletproof in terms of their success with this show. Imagine if they made a marginally good show that some people like and some people don't like. Like They, they would be slaughtered right now. So right. Who, you got, who could you, they possibly have got that, would, yeah, that's that, what I mean. that everybody would be on board with you know like the I mean? creator of the sopranos or breaking uh bad or something like yeah. i don't know like 
what else is one hundred percent on Rotten Tomatoes? I'd be less con- I'd be less convinced than Benioff and Wise. I think that's what I mean. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And it's just it's so when you hear try not to get beaten down by people who are like ah these guys are gonna suck. Like don't pay attention to that. Just go along for the ride. It's gonna be a good one. Trust me. And you know what? It pretty much has to be because we're saying goodbye to the Skywalkers at least for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, but guys, we did have a best comment, and um, we know him, a good uh, follower, listener of ours. He is going to be at Celebration, I believe. It's Sean at Night of Sean. Love How's Sean. Going, Sean. Hi, Sean. Be and um, when when he answered this, saying, "Would you like these guys uh, from Game of Thrones to do an Old Republic style show?" He said, "Absolutely." Judging by what they have done with Game of Thrones, the potential of what they could do with Star Wars in an Old Republic era feels limitless. The way they write battles, factions, and conflicts never disappoints. The potential of storytelling in that era is too ripe for them to pass on. So uh, that comment definitely got the most juice from fans out there, so it seems like that's the one that is on the uh, the the most um, traveled path for fans uh, getting on board with this sort of thing. So very good there with the poll results. Um, you know, like I said, if I find more information about that rumor or this story. I'm obviously going to update you guys on that. We'll talk about it more on the podcast down the road, but right now it is time to hop in to the resistance reports and who handles that for us. His name is James Arthur Bainey. James, go for it. It's the resistance. So because of that, I've been seeing jab pop up a lot. <laughs> I'm just going to throw out there. Team well. jab. Yeah. That's the yeah. Point. Jab. No, no, Lacey. You misheard that. Not, not dab. Not dab. <laughs> not jab. dab. Yeah. Not dab jab. Okay. Jab. Um, James, by, by yeah. the way, you have like new people are like down with James Arthur Bainey. Like it's it, like the full oh, name is arriving yeah, in hashtags know. and stuff. It's funny. <sighs> I don't know about that, guys. All right. Well. <laughs> let's talk about the <laughs> let's talk about the resistance report this week. Uh, we got a couple stories, couple stories, good good couple stories here. Um, Oscar Isaac is is currently on the promo tour right now. He's he's off and he's talking about his new Netflix thing, Triple Frontier. It looks uh, nice. He's doing he's doing podcasts. He's doing um, late night TV and then, and of course, no matter where he goes, someone's gonna say so. Let's get some headlines here. How about that Star Wars? Movie he's also you're with in? the Mandalorian guy, the Mandalorian. Who's oh, yeah, Pedro yeah. Pascal. Yeah, yep. he's in the movie with him. Which Oscar then said. For one of those like Google like wired where they rip off the piece of tape and it's like what Google questions are asked. Mm-hmm. He, Oscar admitted he talked him into being the Mandalorian. What? I didn't yeah. see that. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. said, wow. yes, I because one of the questions was, is he the Mandalorian? He goes, yes, I am the Mandalorian. And Oscar said, yeah, and I'm the one that talked him into it. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Very nice. Very yeah. nice. That's cool. Yeah. So uh, that was our first story. Uh, moving on to our second. <laughs> uh, no, Poe um, po Dameron himself is uh, being asked a couple times about, you know, how everything was on episode nine. One of the things that he mentioned was his closeness or how The Last Jedi kind of brought out this closeness between uh, him and General Leia. Mm-hmm. He was asked, were you surprised when you saw the movie, how intimate your two characters was? And I'm going to go ahead and give you the quote right here. He said, I wasn't surprised because I remember when we were doing that, we worked a lot. Uh, Carrie and I worked together uh, so much. Uh, we would do the scenes and we would got very tight during the shooting of that. So it was a beautiful thing to see. And it carries over into, you know, episode nine is what he's saying as well. It was definitely an unusual thing, but I also think it was right to engage with her character and not just be and let it be something that fades away. It gives Leia a proper place of honor. Um, we'll get into some other comments that he said later about some other characters. But w- uh, Lacey, what was your first thought uh, on when reading this? Uh, are we are we still on board with being excited about how this is going to play out? Yeah, I mean, we're never not going to be excited for episode nine. Sure. This is it, guys. We're getting into the end game if you will um Hey-o. yeah so yeah i'm definitely excited i'm excited to know that they're going to be using scenes with him and leia i don't think you can go into nine and not have scenes with them together seeing a, as they played such a big part together in the last jedi um but i mean john said this before oscar's the best guy about giving answers that don't give any information he's very good at being like oh you want an answer here, hold this pillow. 
<laughs> like it's just flop. <laughs> so like him to answer being like, yes, I love working with Leia. They're going to explore that. You're like, well, obviously. But I did find it interesting that he said that they used, they might be using footage of him and Leia that got left on the cutting room floor. I found that super interesting, but I'll let sure. John talk about it a little more. Yeah, John, what are, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, anything pop out here that surprised you? I am in a feisty mood tonight, guys. <laughs> and I am going to tonight, go... Tonight, you mean this morning? Yes, yeah, this morning. <laughs> I, I am so feisty tonight that I didn't even bring my coffee. I just have my water tonight. I'm so amped up right now. If I, if I took my coffee, I would spin through my roof right now. So... With that said, I'm going to take the speculation highway a little bit here mm. and look at that part of his quote that may be a little telling about vague things because, like Lacey was saying, he can't get into too much, so he has to dance around stuff. Right. When he said... Kind of like was, Richard Grant did, like all Oscar season. I'm so excited to be a part of Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, what did we call him? General Smiley. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's going to make a YouTube video about that. Um, so, but, so Oscar Isaac said it was an unusual thing, but right to engage with her character. Now, when he says unusual thing, I think this means that they had him film additional stuff as though he was talking to Carrie and oh. Leia in front of a stand in or something like that. So there's going to be new footage of Poe interacting with old footage from Carrie to make the dialogue fit better for this story. Right. And as I and this is all a guess, of course, but as I alluded to before, sorry, like can you, you say that one more time, guys? This is what we call a guess. Speculation nation, <laughs> baby. Um, so <laughs> if you if you watch Star Wars Resistance, the the voice actress who took over for Rachel Butera, who wound up doing Leia for the series. I thought did an incredible job duplicating how Carrie Fisher sounded now, like recent Carrie Fisher, like not right. original trilogy Carrie Fisher. Mm -hmm. I think they are bringing her or someone like her in to do additional lines and they may pan behind Leia or, you know, do mouth manipulation with her likeness. You're mm -hmm. going to get, that's why when, when Todd Fisher and Clayton Sandell, even on our podcast said, it's going to be magical what they did with Leia. They're going to bring in, pull out all the stops and it doesn't mean they're recasting her. It just means they're helping bring her back to life in that way. So when they he could says, even shoot her from like the look alike from behind. So you only see her hair and then have that her too. nod yes. like yeah. this and then have the woman mm -hmm. do a voiceover. Yeah. Yes. I think that's definitely happening. And I also think um, they're not going to tell us what lines were and weren't her to keep the yeah. kind of mystery it and that sort of thing. Yeah. But yeah. when he says it was un an unusual thing, but right to engage with her character, not engage with Carrie or go back to, he said, it was unusual to do this to engage with her character that to me says he's acting with help with the green screen and they're going to put uh, Carrie Fisher back in there use some voice help so I think uh, that Body is double. Yeah. now I know that's speculation you guys might, both might think I'm crazy you guys out there listening and watching may think that's crazy but that's where my mind's going right now I don't know what to tell you no I, I like I'll, that idea I think it makes sense well I'll be 100% oh, honest you. I've always thought that was exactly what was going to happen <laughs> mm-hmm I, I can't imagine any other situation other than only using scenes that were like deleted where they were having conversations, but I, and then like no. trying to fix the background or something. I don't know. Uh, to, to me, and maybe it's like the video, minute. the video editing side of me or something. <laughs> but like, absolutely. I was like, yeah, they're going to, they're going to take this scene and then they'll just like cut her out and then put new dialogue here or, right. or they'll use the dialogue of her saying, don't do that, you know, right, and then right. he yeah. can say whatever he wants and they go, OK, well, we have to write the line so that her her response is don't do that because that's all that's what we have. Mm -hmm. So they they write these conversations back and forth and all of her responses are that's what they have. So they have to, you know, make the, the conversations make sense. Um, but I, I think that th that whether or not you think that's what's happening. I, I, I think that this report here, the way he says it, John, you point out, I think that points to that's definitely what they're doing because of what, how you picked out. That's what he's saying. Here, yeah. Right. Engaging with her character so, and what. So are so. you saying, just to be clear, are you saying you think they're only using stuff she recorded or you do agree that they will 
add dialogue no, 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 with no, no, the no. voice Yeah, actor. yeah, because we, we talked about this once before. If you go back and look, we had an oh, episode yeah, where we yeah. were like considering that they would be using audio or, or yeah. um, ADR of other people. But uh, no, I absolutely agree with that. I, I just think that um, there's there's absolutely, I don't know, like if I, uh, if I recorded some video and then people were like, cool, well, I want to have a different conversation with James, but I can only use the stuff that's in his video. You best know they're going to cut it in such a way. Actually, it kind of reminds me, this is kind of weird to say, but Weird Al used to do these videos where he would like have interviews with celebrities, but like he could only say what they said in the thing. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? He can only ask a question so that their answer would be like, he'd be like, so what do you like to eat? And then the person would cut the person like, dogs. I love dogs. And they're like, <laughs> you like to eat dogs? And it's like, <laughs> that's not even what it was, but like it's – Interesting how the whole conversation can change when you have one person leading the conversation and then the other person with canned responses, yeah, mm -hmm. if you will. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's absolutely what's happening. Um, now let's let's talk on the other story, the other aspect of this, because he told a story to uh, Jimmy Fallon that. Uh, his last day was also Anthony Daniels last day and that there was this big speech and, and like a hello, like, Hey, it's the last day. Congratulations. Oh. And then also it's Anthony Daniels last day. And yeah. was like, <laughs> who cares about Oscar Isaac? Anymore? <laughs> right. No, no, no. But that's the, how, what he said. He said, yeah, it's like, he's uh, all of a sudden one. this guy's, this guy's it, been no here one. for every movie, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, but he said, no, I love Anthony. And I think that Anthony probably had uh, one of the best times he's ever had on a Star Wars movie because he's getting to do, you know, so much. And I think that's what we're going to lead in here with this n next portion of the story. Um, John, do you, uh, you, you had something to say because, I mean, if anybody's a listener of the Resistance broadcast, you have been on record Give me more of them droids, right? Yeah, man. I mean, it's the last rodeo. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense to get... Because uh, we've all on the podcast, I think, agreed that in the first two movies in this trilogy, 3PO and R2, together, and even just alone, uh, have been um, almost like cameos. And um, I think a real missing component of the vibe and the heart of Star Wars, uh, in this saga, anyway. And Rogue One, as well. Yeah, right. Um, so... I think it makes a lot of sense to bit, get them back in the mix and in a traditional way without being a too hokey fan service -y. Like, it makes sense for them to be back together. Um, the comic relief, the classic comic relief, R2 and 3PO, on the Falcon uh, with our new big three. Like, make it a little bit of Empire where you have the whole crew kind of on the Falcon there together sort of thing. Um, uh, and also in this story, I don't know if it was this interview, but Oscar Isaac slipped that he, you know, was getting, had a hard time getting in and out of the pilot seat of the Millennium Falcon and that it wasn't made for, uh, I forget what he said, ethnic people, I think was the word he used. I don't know why. So he almost slipped a little bit that he's piloting the Falcon, which we did kind of see that Lacey pointed out is in that first JJ photo, um, that you and I thought was Ray. Um, I stood there <laughs> going, no, no, no. Yeah. No, no. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, 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 no. I think, I think it just makes sense. It's the last one. Get, get R2 and 3PO back in there. No Dameron. I think, I think all fans, even if you don't like this trilogy, will like seeing those two back, busting each other's chops and going old school. And uh, it just makes too much sense for it not to happen. And for Oscar Isaac to allude to 3PO doing a lot more in this movie, whether that's being... Uh, you know, the, the coat rack or, or whatever you want to the call it. Uh, it, it. It To me, it's all gravy. And uh, it, it makes me even more uh, optimistic about what we're going to see. Lacey, what are your thoughts on this? You love Oscar Isaac. I think he's great. I actually do love Oscar Isaac. I, I'm not a big fan of Poe. I, I think Poe is like, he's an okay character. He's not one of my favorites. He's not Tally. So he's doing better than that. Um. What about no, love I, confirmed? No, 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 no. No damn run <laughs> on that one. Um, no, this is great. I think Oscar does play a big role in this movie. I think we are going to see the three of them together. You know, Finn, Ray, and Poe. I think they're going to go on a crazy adventure. It's going to be great. Who's um, Finn, Ray? Finn, comma, Ray, comma, <laughs> Poe, Dameron. The big three. Um, the big two, Finn, Ray, G and Although Poe. I'm more excited James is with a little the slow Dameron today. Oh my gosh. I'm more excited with the idea that R2 and C3PO could be back together again because, you know, we say this all the time. We just said it 
just now, they're really not in this sequel trilogy. And it bothers me because I feel like they're the constant that I always love seeing that this, this, especially the sequel trilogy tends to be a little dark. I feel like that with Last Jedi especially tends to get a little depressing. So Mm. they needed more comedy moments. And I don't think we had those. And I think if there was more C-3PO and R2 in there, maybe it would have been a little lighter in some situations. Yeah. Um, But I- I'm just really hoping they get into some saying, hijinks. Who was it that was saying it was fun? Like the episode nine was going to be fun. Oh, Isn't everybody. Crazy? Uh, yeah, Clayton had told everybody? us that. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Clayton had mostly said when he came on the show, I think it was August, he had said that it's going to be fun and people are going to enjoy themselves, a lot of fan service, they're going to leave the movie feeling great. Mm -hmm. You know, JJ, when he talked to Ash, was saying how he thinks people will leave happy or whatever it was like that. And then even John Boyega said fans are going to be happy. Didn't Mm -hmm. he? John Boyega said something like that, like people are going to be satisfied. Is that what it was? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know JJ used the word satisfied. Oscar Isaac said it was the most fun they ever had so Mm -hmm. far making it. Right. Um, And and Lacey, good good point about looking back to The Last Jedi. If those two were bopping around together, it makes you think of... Because Empire was kind of dark the way it ended, but you remember seeing... R2 and 3PO and see 3PO saying, Whoa. look what happened to me. Like, yeah, yeah. Whoa. like that. So The comic, the comic relief was uh, uh, missing a little bit, I think in the last Jedi, uh, the last especially Jedi, at the end there. Yeah. Yeah. It gets really depressing. Whereas I yeah. feel like throughout empire strike strikes back, which is commonly, uh, you know, compared to the last Jedi. Cause it's the second in a series. It's yeah, an automatic yeah. thought process, but the Empire Strikes Back has some genuinely funny moments with Yoda, <clears throat> with Leia and Han together, where they have that like kind of tense dynamic, but they really like each other. You have C-3PO and Chewie. Um, I just I would don't... say that Last Jedi has some genuinely funny moments, though. Of course I mean, it does. And I'm not saying it doesn't. Film, I'm not yeah. saying it doesn't. I'm just saying that if I'm looking at Last Jedi compared to some of the other movies in Star Wars it's not necessarily a really funny movie. Mm -hmm. No, right, right. But I think R2 and C-3PO could have added more I I agree. Moments. And I'm hoping I get them in episode nine because I like them. And they're the best. (laughs) My my uh my thought on this was uh was that I think we we should get this or we it almost feels like Anthony deserves it because we recently got that other story too where Mark Hamill was talking about no 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 Luke Skywalker wouldn't do this or so throw throw me a bone Ryan you know and allow me to have this this conversation because this is mm-hmm. how my character would react with C three PO's character right right they kind of right. had that interaction at the request of a legacy actor. So it kind of makes me feel like if the legacy actors have any pool, Anthony might in this one be like, hey, man, give give me some moments with R2. Like, I think this, like, I want to feel wrapped as an actor. I want my character to feel wrapped that these two, that I'm going to get to bunk, bunk my, you know, hand on on R2's head or something. That's one of the best moments in The Force Awakens is when R2 Mm -hmm. wakes up and he goes, what did you just call me or whatever? And he hits R2 and then he goes, my old friend. And he puts Mm -hmm. his hand like, Mm-hmm. I mean, one of our listeners, Len, says that, you know, one of our patrons, hey, what's up, Len? He has said to us before <laughs> Yo, that up, <laughs> he loves R2-D2 and that he teared up when R2 came back to life in The Force Awakens. Like, they're such yeah. loved characters, guys. Put them in the movies more. Yeah. We miss them. BB-8's yeah. great and all, but come on. We need some OG droids up in here. Yeah, especially R2. He's such a, such a fun, wise ass. Like, I love I that. I know. I mean, yeah, he's the best. All hey right. guys, you want to talk about the, uh, the the next big news that really doesn't have a whole lot to do with Star Wars? No, sure, we could, why not? Yeah, there's probably a little bit we could talk about it, obviously, um, when it comes to right. Fox. But yeah, sure. And I th- I think some of the some of you guys might even be bigger experts on this story than I am. But l- let's let's cut to the chase, guys. Um, last week, Disney finally locked in that deal with Fox. Um, so. People are starting to freak out a little bit. They're like, wait a minute, what does this mean? Because Star Wars was made by Fox and 20th Century Fox and shrum chum, shrum chum, shrum chum, right? And everybody's (laughs) losing their minds um, over the possibility of like the 20th Century Fox logo being restored or or whatever. I think it's more of the box set. 
maybe yeah i look i'm gonna i'm gonna give my take on this real quick because like honestly i just don't care i remember (laughs) when force awakens i really don't i remember when force awakens was coming out my friend said dude what do you think do you think that they'll still keep the 20th century fox logo and i was like no why would they and he's like because it's like iconic it's like that's part of star wars and i was like you're insane i was like what why why would that ever be part of yeah, I was like, why would that ever be part of Star Wars in your head? In the like the studio logo before the movie. The movie doesn't the movie doesn't start until it says a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. You want to talk about that? That's important. Not the little drumming or whatever. Like hey, it I, starts I, with the Lucasfilm is, logo. Wow. Wow. If I well, may I don't, I don't even if I may offer I don't even say a, that because if 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 Lucasfilm wasn't in charge of Star Wars and somebody else was making it, it'd still be Star Wars, it'd still be making Star Wars movies. It's just that I'm a Lucasfilm logo. Like I get that Lucasfilm is They're a bunch of know. cowards. They shouldn't have their logo in front of this movie. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're they're OG. They're they're really like the the, the <laughs> like people James who are Bain making analogy. this their property. <laughs> But I'm just saying other people can make Star Wars content. I, I don't know. But I'm sorry. That, that's I thought this was a Star Wars this. movie. I'm sorry. I was <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm going to try a James Bainey analogy here. It's like if McDonald's John, this. sold the McFlurry <laughs> to Chipotle and then I bought mm-hmm. the McFlurry from Chipotle and was confused why it wasn't in the McDonald's cup. What? Um, that's a James Bainey analogy right there. If I ever heard one. No, I don't, I don't think you'd be confused. I th- I think, <laughs> I think so. Somebody... Oh, we're really talking about this. Oh, okay. All right. I think somebody who got that McFlurry would say, <laughs> it's just not the McFlurry anymore. And I would be like, are you kidding me? It's just a different cup. Who buys it because of the cup? Was that a successful James Bainey analogy? You buy it because of the, the ice cream and the, the fillings. Oh my. Not because of who's selling it or or what cup it's in. If that was a good James Bainey analogy, I want you to put hashtag Bainey analogy confirmed. In the comments, These baby. These hashtags like are getting longer every episode. Yeah. Uh, so so is the resistance report. Um, I don't know. My, my, Lacey, do you have any takes on uh, the Fox thing, I guess? I don't know. No, I just want my box set. Give me my box set. I, I, I you know, I, I think it's funny because you have people saying, oh, we're going to get the original versions of the no, movies. No, 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 no. Um, but I do uh, want them in one set. You know, people are ruling that out. I think they could do that one day and be like, here's a special one-off thing. It's not canon anymore, but here you can have it if, you know, you want to be old school. I like I don't see why that would hurt anybody if they did that. <laughs> if you want to shut up, please. It would make a lot <laughs> you can of have money it if you want to shut up, please. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh my goodness. It would make a ton oh of money goodness. so they could do that, but uh yeah, I don't think uh, aside from Disney uh Cre- you know, becoming the empire quite literally. Uh, I don't think this changes much for Star Wars. I don't think they're going to reapply the fanfare back to the movies that were that made they, under uh, the original. Huh? Can you say that they passed go and collected two hundred dollars? You uh, yeah. Oh, Monopoly. I see what you're saying. Um, hey, John. Not bad. Can I? Can I challenge something? And I don't. I don't mean to be. Are we going I, back I to McFlurries? Like, because if you're about to bring no, no, up McFlurries no. again, I no, swear. No, no. I recently feel like I've become like the the controversial person here, but <laughs> do do people really care about the the original versions? Yes, I think. Yes. Oh, hold on, hold on. I think that people say all the time it would make they would make so much money if they did that, and I think I'm kind of pulling the straws here a little bit, but I think. That the people who complain about the the original version and the, the despecialized version, all that, that is as big of a community as like the Disney hates Star Wars community. Like the small but super vocal group of people who yeah, always fine. complain that the special edition <laughs> sucks and why don't cowards. they release these? I just want my original movie back. Why won't you release it? Blah, blah, blah. And it's like 10 people. No, you know what? It's probably not. It's probably. I really don't think they'd make that. Well, I know. I'm. uh, Yeah, yeah. What would would Disney ever turn down making money? And the answer is no. So if they can, what do you mean by making money? They release it and then they sell like, you know, not much. What if they sell twenty million copies of it? They'll just sell sell a limited batch like they do with the Disney movies at one hundred dollars. Twenty million copies. You don't want that money. 
You know who wants that money? You know who wants that money? Bob Iger wants that money. <laughs> Hashtag Bob Iger wants that money. You know money. who also yeah. likes money? Me. What? Scoundrels. People who do scoundrels no, rundown like saying, money. Yeah. All right. We also had a, a third Star Wars celebration talk, but we're not doing that because no. there's enough Star Wars celebration talk out there and we got nothing yeah. more to add right. to that. <laughs> right. Let's move on to talk John a, yeah. talking rundown. Yeah, I'll talk stuff. a little bit. A little bit about Smuggler style. celebration in the rundown. So on the count of three, let's pump this baby into hyperspace. One, two, three, punch it. it. Oh. oh, I didn't do it, Dad. <laughs> Gosh. All right. See, we don't rehearse that stuff. All right, guys. <laughs> ILM's X-Lab to reveal Vader Immortal, a Star Wars VR series. Episode one details will be at Star Wars Celebration in a special panel. Uh, I believe that panel is on Friday. Is that correct? To be- yes. Oh. Um... I don't have it available. Well after I the think... episode nine panel, I believe. Yes. yes. Uh, anyway, after the panel it's on the show floor, they're going to have showcases of the VR thing. Oh, so cool. For people to try out. And I heard one of the options, aside from the first episode of the Vader experience, you're going to be able to put on a VR set and experience what it's like to sleep in line at Celebration on a concrete <laughs> floor in case you are tired of doing that and uh, you miss doing that from the past Celebration. So I was that's wondering one of those can't, can't do it so. anymore, so they have um, to bring right, it guys, to so, uh, But look for that panel on Friday at Celebration. Uh, hopefully we get to check that one out. And obviously show floor. Maybe we'll see you guys there trying on those things like trying to fight Vader and stuff like that. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Wow, but, I like that. Yeah. Um, all right, so the next story, guys. We'll see you. You won't see us. Season, oh, Lacey's got it going on. She looks like um, Marty McFly Jr. looking for fruit in Back to the Future 2. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fruit, fruit please. please. Fruit. fruit, please. Fruit. Thank you. All right. Resistance Season 1 finale aired. You can catch my <laughs> review of that over at Star Wars Newsnet. And we will be talking about Season 1 in depth on Thursday. I know a lot of people were asking us if we're going to be talking more about Resistance. We will. So on Thursday, we're going to have our discussion on Season 1 and looking ahead to the future, what the end of Season 1 may mean for Season 2 and how it may tie in with other stuff. So look for that discussion on Thursday. Um, I also right. did my uh, review on for patrons only. Yes, James did a video reaction to the finale on our Patreon page, patreon.com slash His quick 12-minute reaction. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah you bet. want 12 minutes of reaction, baby? Hit up yeah. that $2 a month. I yep. messaged James. I go, something quick. He goes, okay, I got you. 12 minutes later. <laughs> James can't do anything quick except dab. That's all. Um, all right. Guys, good, Queen's good. Shadow, the book about Padme Amidala, the spoiler review is available now uh, by our own Jordan Pate on StarWarsNewsNet.com. So if you don't have the time to read it or you don't feel like reading the whole book, you can cheat your way through it like I did in high school and college. Don't tell anybody. Don't tell my mom. Uh, and read his review over at Star Wars News that it is a full spoiler review in addition to a non-spoiler review we have from Kyle Larson. But the spoiler review is there for all of your details and nuggets that you may want to learn more about Padme through that book, Queen's Shadow. So go check out that review there. And if you want to read the book, obviously go buy the book. You know where to do that. All right. Guys, that is it for the Scoundrels Rundown this week. We are going to pop over to Lacey to get into your questions that you sent us on Twitter, emails, wherever you guys sent it, usually on Twitter. So uh, let's get it going now. Chewy, get us out of here. All right, guys, it's that time again for Ask the Resistance. You've got Star Wars questions. Hopefully we have some good Star Wars answers. I've been wondering, what are midi-chlorians? So we're going to kick it off with one of our patrons, Len Brown. Hey, Len. He's, hey, He's Len. the best, guys. Uh, Already talked at about him. We Kylo, talked about Len a lot today. At Kylo underscore Len. Kylo he Len. He changed his name. Can you believe that? I love it. I love it, Wait, Len. did he get rid of his handle? Did he have like at Len Brown and then he got rid of it? I don't know, but I am enjoying Kyle. Way to lose Len. your handle. Way to lose your handle, <laughs> Len. I'm gonna, go, you know what? I'm gonna get Len Brown. I'm gonna get at Len Brown, and then I'm gonna pretend I'm Len. Heck yeah! <laughs> you know it's available. <laughs> he asks, right or wrong? One of the complaints of the Last Jedi was the amount of social commentary in the movie. 
Other Star Wars movies have social commentary, so how much social commentary should there be in Star Wars? James, you're smart. I'm going to let you answer this question. What do you think? I'm not smart? What? I'm not. Ladies first? No ladies first today. <laughs> James, you're Baneys smart. first. <laughs> oh, Baneys first. Yeah. Ba- Baneys like first. Baneys first. Uh, right or wrong, one of the complaints about Les Jazz, social commentary. I would agree with that, yes. <sighs> okay. Um, here's my thing. is like I, I personally don't really... It's not that I don't appreciate. It's that I just kind of don't care. I kind of look over the like, oh, see how it's relative and real life stuff, which is the social commentary. I, I mean, to me, <laughs> I get it. If like somebody's saying like, oh, they're trying to just push women in Star Wars or something. And I'm like, OK, maybe I I, I didn't think about that or, or think, you know, it, di- it didn't like click with me. I, I didn't care, you know, right, whether right. they did it or not. If there's a if there's a movie I'm watching Avatar and they're like oh they're just trying to push this agenda of blah 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 I'm like I don't even think of that I just think they're trying to go to the planet and they're trying to they're killing off the people and I didn't know that that's relative to today's news so my my thing is is it is should it be there um, I don't care if it is or isn't but should it be there I guess it probably should because i think movies in general or any type of art is supposed to kind of be how an artist or or a storyteller is experiencing life and if they feel that this is kind of the the state of humanity right now or maybe it's something that uh, sits emotionally with them and has some weight then i guess they can tell it i I understand that maybe someone's perspective isn't everybody's experience a perspective so you run into kind of this clashing of well you're just trying to push that and it's like well yeah yeah i'm trying to push that that's you don't see that i i am doing that so it turns into a, a problem but at the same time like isn't every story gonna be one person's one side whether it was social commentary on today or social commentary on like the 1600s you know when mm-hmm. right. this was going on so it's it's whatever um so that that's kind of my take on it, but but I don't really pay attention to or notice that stuff. I'm kind of like free of drama and and politics and stuff like that. I just I just kind of just stay away from all of it. All right, cool. Our next question comes from Darth Hurricane at Darth. Obi Wan Hur- sucks. <laughs> at Darth Hurricane. <laughs> <I'm> just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Darth Hurricane's one of our patrons, right? Yes, maybe. <laughs> yes, John's embarrassed. I can't keep track. Okay. Yeah. So Darth asks, in The Force Awakens, Kylo speaks to Vader's mask about finishing what he started. What does he think he needs to finish, and could it play into Episode Nine in some way, either as part of redemption or cheating death? Well, Darth. Who's going to take this one? (laughs) I'd love to take this question. Guarantee I'm not getting this one. (laughs) John, do you want this one? No, I'm good. Are you sure? I just want to be your friend after the podcast. No, it's okay. You could take it. No, no, no. No, no, no. John, what do you think? I think Lacey should answer this. <laughs> You're really getting dragged this out. Okay. Gosh, man. So, Darth, um, I think that what he was talking about was obviously ruling the galaxy. I think that was one of Vader's bigger challenges and or wants was to rule the galaxy. Originally, he I mean, wanted to save bring Padme. peace to the galaxy. Well, peace. I think peace is relative to what he thinks peace is. Was Quit it really with your peace, social though? commentary, Lacey? I'm sorry. I sh- I should have answered the first question. <laughs> so, do I think he needs to finish what he started? I think he's already almost there. I think he's now ruling the galaxy as supreme leader at the end of episode nine. I've said this before, guys. I don't know if he's happy with the choice that he's made. So, we'll see how that plays in episode nine. Um, I don't know how that would play into redemption or cheating death. I know, John, wasn't there rumors going around that like someone's going to bring back vader with the Um, mask is that where this question's going yeah so people think because in the comic vader conjured up uh an old sith lord moment uh via a mask that kylo could potentially do the same thing using vader's mask yeah i don't see that happening so darth if that's what you were aiming for i don't i don't think that's gonna happen i think like i said Last week or the week before, when we were talking about Disney stakeholders meeting, where they showed that clip of Kylo opening a box with the mask in it, 
I think mm-hmm. he's closing the Bucks. I stand by that. I think mm. he's setting this aside, mm. and we're going to see him kind of come into his own as a villain in episode nine and really uh, figure out what he wants to do as his next steps. And I think he's got to leave Darth Vader behind. Um, I hope it, that answered your question a little bit. Um, next is Da Kine Awakens. Is that like a German thing? Da Kine Awakens? Da Kine. Da Kine. For- is Kine Force? No. Because then Awakens Da is the, be- right? Yeah, but... Da Kine Awakens. What if it's just like... I don't know. Like it's kinda, but backwards. No, I'm pretty sure "da" is "the" mm. in German. Oh, it is, but you, everything else about a statement doesn't. You know what though? Fall into the it's German, a, German. People thing. always like when we do this because they're like, "You got it right. That is what my handle's about." Or no, you know what? I bet it is. Da yeah. kind awakens. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Quit with your social commentary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Are you German? Let us know. Watch him be like, my name is DeKine. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah. around the time of Star yeah. Wars Resistance, why would anyone trust or join the First Order? Oh. What was so bad about the New Republic, John? So, we, I guess we're doing big social commentary on today's can we ap- Resistance. Can we appreciate how I just read that question? Theater. It was very theatrical. <laughs> um... <laughs> you know, you know, I really, and this is a serious answer. I really think it has to do with history repeating itself. Like, um, I think it was uh, like Ronald Reagan said, "We're always one generation away from losing liberty." Uh, it's because people forget if you're not around for past experiences that your country or the world went through, you're gonna to kind of take for granted what people who before you went through. Um, and uh, I think that works for today. Like kids looking back on today on world war two, they're like, I don't care what those guys did. They're like what we, mm-hmm. when was D day? I don't remember. But if you go back 50 years ago, people know damn well when it happened and they had people who were there who came home. So that sort of stuff is real. And then you take it to star Wars and look at Tam in resistance, which we'll talk more about on Thursday. She's like, she wasn't around for the empire. She doesn't know how bad it was and how, uh, that tyrannical rule was she only knows what the new Republic era is. She's a young kid and that's not her fault. That's just all she knew. So the first order doesn't seem like some giant threat. She doesn't know what that means. So when they say, we'll give you security, she's like, Oh, all right, this is the quick, easy way. Um, I'm on board. It's just like a a Jedi taking the quick, easy way to the dark side. That's that version of it when you're not a force user. So, um, I don't think it's necessarily, oh, I don't like the, the New Republic. I think it's just one of those things where the First Order knows how to manipulate people. And it's like uh, old war propaganda. You know how to bring people on board and, and kind of manipulate their minds to, to join your cause, even though you may not be doing the right thing. Can I can I jump in real quick, too? Because remember that Tam's, Tam's struggle here is not between the First Order and the New Republic. It's between the First Order and the Resistance. Yes. Which the Resistance at this time is seen as extremist. They seem like a third party group of crazy people radicals who are worried yeah. about something that it, that it's not right. the case at all they seem nuts right right so when she when she finds that her friends are outed as these these people that she's like what you guys are with the 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 flat earthers you know what i mean or whatever yeah yeah, yeah. You, you know she's like she's like these guys are starting to make sense these guys are just like their own kind of like law enforcement and the, you know they have a vision um you know, so it, it, that starts to make a little bit more sense, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's just when you when you point to those types of things and the first order probably looking like like, hey, we're the level headed folks here. Um, we'll give you security. Yeah. We'll give you food. We'll give you a place to stay. She's probably like, this is looking pretty good. Um, so yeah, I, I think it does seem very tempting, and it probably is easier in that era if you weren't around for the Empire and the Emperor Palpatine and that stuff to find it enticing. So that's uh, that's my answer. And let us know what your handle. Uh, means because now you got me curious. But thank you da for the kind. question. Dakine Avakens. Avakens. Uh, I love first that of all, kind of handle. <laughs> <laughs> ah. <laughs> Very, good. Very um, good. First of all, John, during your whole speech, I was just hearing in the background. Du, 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 du. What song is that? Is that from? <laughs> what song is that? Is that race theme? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's our national anthem, John. Lacey thinks yeah. I'm serious. That's the best part. 
She, John. Lacey has that low of an opinion of me. She thinks I don't know what our national anthem John. is. John. John. <laughs> bing bong, bing bong, bing bong, bing. God bless America. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for your questions. If you want to be on the show, make sure to follow us on Twitter at R-B-A-T-S-W-N-N and tweet us your questions about Star Wars, whether Dekine is really Dekine of Vacants, or if you like Kylo, send me your Kylo questions because I like talking about him. John likes talking about himself. What? (laughs) No, everyone else likes talking about me. John likes uh, talking about himself. I'm just kidding. Uh, John you loves also- those book it tweets. He's like, this has happened in episode nine. Book it. Book it. <laughs> Rumor. Book it. No, what were the ones we were talking about that one day where John was just like, guys, hear me out on this one. That's what he always says. Hear me out. Hear me Say out that second. Kylo is like sweating really bad in this scene. And then this other thing happens. Obviously, he's the villain. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> Book it. Mm, Hashtag called, called Kylo is sweating, therefore wrong. he's a villain. <laughs> Spe- mm-hmm. Speaking of Kylo Ren being the villain, what side of the uh, what side of the chart was he on? That poster, that celebration poster. He's on was the he dark on the blue side. side or on the when red I act- side? When I activated blue my badge, side red side. He was on the dark side. <laughs> At the very tippy yeah. top. <laughs> He was Hold on a very minute. Large. Well, I thought he was supposed to be like in the middle. He's supposed to be a dual like, protagonist, is, man. All of this is about him. He's in hey, the middle. Friends. He's conflicted. He's back and forth, right? That's Episode 9 isn't out yet. Currently. It's not out yet. <laughs> well, James, if if right. if um fan art on Tumblr made the official t-shirt poster, then he would have been in the middle. And it there would have go. been a glorious poster. I love fan art on Tumblr. So do I. All right. Love it. You can send your ben questions to hashtag the Ask the Resistance on Twitter. Send them our way as long as you also send some fan art because I want to see it. John, back to you. Yeah, I love fan art. I'm just joking. No, you about don't. That. You're lying. Um, Jordan Delgado TFA stands for the fan art. <laughs> loves, oh, I can't, I'm going to look for that. I guy's knew pins you were. I knew you were just going to bring up Jordan Delgado. That's the only one that you're like. Ah, yes, Jordan Delgado. <laughs> Eli Hyder, legend. Also, you've worked with him. Name me one more fan art person. Who's the uh, John Burns? Who's the guy? Yeah, there you go. Is he he's a fan art? I thought he's in he's in the business though. Who's the no. who's the guy who does like he just recently did that Rogue One poster that is like part of celebration? Or how about Rogue Brian Michael Ward? Pascal. How about Brian Ward, the guy who yeah, did uh, yep. the Schmodown stuff? Mm-hmm. He all right, anyway, back to you, John. Oh, I just proved you wrong by naming four people. I can keep going all day, baby. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So speaking of four people, I know all day, baby. <laughs> I have four generals. That's right, four generals that we need to thank on our Patreon page. Salute. We have patron generals Adam Odell, Carmelo, a.k.a. Grey Jedi, Val Trichkoff, and our newest general, Brian Shalito, Ooh. who just promoted himself from Admiral. Thank you yeah, so man. much, Brian, for joining the ranks. Um, you guys will see Adam doing his Patreon pod race on Thursday in between our Will of the Force segment and our discussion segment. Um, he's going to talk about something pretty cool about Poe Dameron. So look out for Adam on Thursday. But thank you to all of our patrons again. You know, Each time we do an episode, we have new patrons joining the ranks. Um, uh, you know, I, I can't say enough about it. So if, if you are interested in, in our additional content, uh, head over to patreon.com slash resistance broadcast. We have five tiers. You can join us starting at two bucks a month. That gives you access to the page. And then from there, you'll see the different rewards for tiers two through five. Um, starting with tier two, you can begin submitting topics for us to talk about on the show. And you'll see that on Thursday, we take patron submissions for topics to discuss all the way to our generals at tier five, where you get to actually be on the show uh, doing a Patreon pod race. So thank you all to our patrons. Um, we really love you guys. All your support does so much to us. And this is the time to join our Patreon page because I promise you at Star Wars Celebration. So much for us. There's going to be. What did I say wrong? So much for you us. said to us. So much support for us. Whatever you want to say, Lacey. Uh, but we th- we're going to be doing a lot of behind the scenes and, and cool private access videos on the Patreon page. So get involved. This is the time to do so. 
Uh, we appreciate that. So, and that's it for that plug. But uh, one more plug. Thanks to everyone who bought our new Thank the Maker t-shirts. Those things have been selling hey. pretty well. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, we have our new t-shirt with Thank the Maker on the front and a uh, silhouette photo capture of George Lucas on the back. Um, just for this past weekend, all of our t-shirts were on sale. So thank you, everyone who checked out our designs and bought stuff over at Tee Public. We appreciate that. And uh, make sure, more impo- most importantly, you guys are subscribed to the podcast. You can do that if you're watching right here on YouTube. Thanks to everyone who is getting us closer to 2,000 subscribers. Also, iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify. Um, iTunes, SoundCloud, Spotify. A Stitcher, maybe Google Play, where anywhere you can get a podcast, I think you can find us. So, thank you so much for spreading the word of our podcast. Keep sending episodes to people because we've been seeing our viewer count go up, and we know that's thanks to you guys. So, thank you to everyone out there who listens and watches us. I really appreciate also, it very comment, much. Let, it, let us know if there's a place where you would like to see us and you're not seeing us. Yeah, like if there's a like, pizza place like in Chicago that forced... we should go to, hit us up in the yeah. comments. Let us know which pizza place we should go to. And we'll Chuck go e. there. Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, we'll go to Sabaros in Chicago, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, James is <laughs> yeah. right. Let us know if there's anywhere else we're not available. Yeah, Pizza Hut's fine. Anywhere else we're not available, uh, let us know, and we'll try to get our podcast up there for you guys. Uh, but also, uh, head to StarWarsNewsNet.com. That's our website for your latest news, reviews, editorials, information, and more. Um, and rumors. Al- also, rumors. Yeah, I do post rumors on there. I don't know if you... Rumor has it that I might post rumors on there. And uh, you guys can find us on our social media channels. You can find me on Twitter at Johnny Hoey and over at StarWarsNewsNet.com, writing about rumors sometimes. And uh, James Bainey, how about you, sir? All right, well, you guys can find me. You can find me. I don't know which side. Right there at Meyer Trunks. It just popped up. Look at that. Post production. Oh, I went away. Okay. Well, um, yep, that's where you can find me Twitter, Instagram. And Lacey, where can people find you? People can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Lacey Gillerin, where I talk about Star Wars. I'll be posting tips and tricks leading up to celebration as well. Make sure to follow me there. Um, and then I don't want to like, tricks. what? Hmm? Oh, I said tips plus tricks. Yes. And tricks. Um, and then fun fact, <laughs> patrons this month are getting a really good sticker. Probably one of the best stickers we've ever sent out. So if you're interested, now's the time to join. Mm, very interesting. <laughs> just, just saying. All I think right. it's like my favorite sticker we've ever sent out. Just saying. And you get a note from me. I handwrite all those notes, guys. <laughs> it's not <laughs> in my handwriting. So it's, it's very, a thing. very <laughs> No, anyway, no, love you guys. Lacey, Lacey does see, do all see that. You next time. Um, and also, um, we have an Instagram. Um, it's growing in numbers. It's the, I think it's just the resistance broadcast on Instagram. Is that right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, guys, we're, so. we're everywhere. And you know what? We're going to be in Chicago in 18, 17 days, something like that. So I we'll, can't wait. I'm we'll so see, excited. We'll see all you guys there soon. And hopefully we all hit the lottery and get in all the panels we want. And I think all of you should go rogue. Don't go for the nine panel. Lame. Lame. <laughs> go for the Disney Parks panel. That's the one you want to go for. So go for that. And uh, I'll I'll take I'll bite the bullet and go I'll give my shot at the episode nine panel and we'll see what happens. I'm just kidding. All right, guys, we'll see you guys on Thursday. We are going to have that discussion about Star Wars Resistance recapping season one, the finale, and looking ahead to season two, all that good stuff. And of course, Will of the Force, Patreon Pod Race, Resistance Transmissions, going to be a good one, I promise. So we'll see you then. Enjoy your weeks, and uh, peace out from us here at the Resistance Broadcast. See you around, kids. Bye. Tips, tricks, and treats. <laughs>